Hi there, thanks for joining us back at the Weekly Word Outdoor Adventures. Uh, I promised you we was going to do a three-part three part series on uh, Mason Evans. If you saw last week's, we were at Panther Bluff where he lived for 40 years in the wilderness. We're here today at the Charles Hall Museum in Teleco Plains to show you a really interesting object that was found right outside the cave just about uh, three decades or so ago. But first, I'd like to introduce you to uh, the late great Charles Hall's daughter. Charles was a beloved leader here in Teleco Plains for many decades, and I'm with Pam Matthews, who is the manager and curator of the museum, and she's going to tell you a little bit about what she does here. Uh, tell us about the museum. Okay. Pam. Well, my um, father, he was a lifetime collector since he was really a little boy. He was born in 24, and um, so we never really knew what he was going to do with all his things. And so when he, in 2003, he built Building One and brought his gun collections and his Indian artifacts and some Indian artifacts from the Swainson family who was always um, collecting and had their displays in the downtown drugstore. Many people remember that. And then other things he had like telephones and he ran the telephone company here and bought it in 54 and just uh, just really rich. And then so four years later he um, built Building 2, which we're in front of right now in 2007 and um, you know did the rest of his collections and then we've added things and people come and donate. So my father and mother um, basically donated this for the benefit of Teleco Plains and Monroe County. They put it in a private foundation. It's governed by the board of directors. I just have one vote. I am president of the board of directors because I have high passion and interest and work on it a lot. So I curate it and um, do the collections and we have um, just very, you'll just I have to come and see what all we have. We have a very rich um, Teleco history, Monroe County, Appalachian region, and American history. Uh, we have a rich American history on our uh, gun collection, 340 uh, weapons, and they are all the way from the matchlock, um, which was in the, the first weapon that um, was handheld in the 1500s, and then we have the flintlocks, which came on and was very well used in the 1700s, and then all the Civil War and World War I and World War II um, weapons, and, and a lot of our uh, Cherokee um, artifacts and prehistoric before uh, the Cherokee were here, the other Native Americans. Uh, the Mississippian period and all the periods before that. So um, I just always uh, like to welcome people to the museum. There's just so much to talk about. We have a lot um, that we have planned. We currently just um, professionally produced a um, video. We It was a struggle to keep it to seven minutes on the history of wagon train in the Cherahala Skyway and we sell it in the museum for ten dollars and hope to have it on our uh, website soon and um, it's a very rich history of how the Cherahala Skyway started in 1958 and of course dad was a big part of that and fought for the Cherahala Skyway for 38 years is why the bridge is named after him over Laura Branch, the Charles Hall Bridge, and um, so we're, um, anyway, we're excited about that. We've not quite finished with our wagon train display. Uh, we have applied to be a certified site for the um, Trail of Tears um, to honor all the, pe the ancestral lands of the Native Americans, including the Cherokee and the Cherokee who walked through this area over 3,000 on the tragic Trail of Tears in 1838. And uh, we'll have a um, dedication and a ceremony when we're able to do that. And we're working on new displays for that and building one right now. All right, and uh, uh -huh. if our folks want to come and visit the museum, it's free. It's free. It's That's what's free. Gonna, how much does it cost? It's free. We yeah. Hope you'll leave a donation when you come. You got a donation That's box. That's right. right so. We do have a donation box. We have gift shops in, in the gift in, shops and both buildings, and a percentage of the gift shops help fund us. Um, private donations help fund us, and we do have donation boxes. But um, 
he he was our founder. My father was very very um, insistent that we keep um, mission free for people who couldn't afford, and uh, just you know hope that people who can uh, will see the richness of us preserving our mission, which is to preserve all all our great history. And one of the objects that you can see here at the museum is something that I'm about to show you. Pam's been gracious enough to let us get it out and. Uh, outdoors here on the picnic table today to show it to you. It's normally under glass, but uh, I've been a, a student of reading everything I could find on Mason Evans for um, 45 years now, th since Frank McKinney's book first came out in 1976, and uh, I didn't know this existed. It was only found about 30 years ago, and back in the summer I was in the museum and was shocked to see this. Uh, 30 some odd years ago, this was found uh, about 200 feet right in front of Panther Cave by some boys and uh, it's a rock and it's got some interesting uh, put some water on it here to help you to see the markings maybe a little bit better here I don't know how well that's showing up but it's got an E on it right here and it's got uh, some other sketchings on it and there was some debate about whether it was Mason Evans or not because um, somebody said he wasn't known for, for art, but uh, an old book that I found that's very, very rare that came out in the 1890s said that Mason Evans, before he had his uh, mental breakdown, was known for doing sketchings. So I think this was definitely his, but uh, that's debatable. But since it's right in front of Panther Bluff, and you can see it's dark from here down, Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it was uh, probably originally vertically in the ground and it reminds me kind of a, of a grave marker and I read about how much he had a cat that he loved <laughs> and I just wonder if that wasn't where he buried his cat and made this little marker stone for it. I don't know, that's just my theory, but it, it's a kind of a neat object to have here at the museum and we're real thankful for Pam to have us here today and uh, let us do this. and. This is the Cleveland Community Chapel's broadcast, so I do want to tell you one thing. Uh, you know, Pam, uh, a lot of people, uh, they got a bad idea of a church. They get mixed up with museums. They think that the, the church is where the saints go to be on display, that the church is a museum for the saints. Now, there's a difference in a museum and a church. A church is more like a hospital for us sinners. And a lot of folks get preachers mixed up and they think they're supposed to be perfect sometime. Well, you won't ever find a perfect preacher other than Jesus, but uh, hopefully we're examples to the flock. But uh, we're really, in God's eyes, we're just one sinner telling other sinners where we can find forgiveness at, and that's in Jesus Christ. See you next week. We'll do part three on Mason Evans. Thanks for joining us.